baby, no limit, yeah, I'm all about that sack, bitch. My young niggas, they clap shit, let the max spit, we wax shit. Before Lil Bibby burst on the scene with his track Kill Shit and then dropped his debut mixtape, Free Crack, which landed him on Double XL's freshman list for 2014. Man, I start getting shout outs from, man, the, the grace, like, man, my fucking J Drake, J Hover, man. Before Lil Bibby appeared on tracks with Nicki Minaj, Memphis Bleak, Yo Gotti, and Lil Herb, bringing him levels of fame he wasn't ready for. If everybody that know me, no, I'm not really a people person, so I had to suck it up and kind of learn, like, you know, like how, how to speak with everybody, you know. Before Bibby dropped Free Crack 2, was co signed by Drake and bumped his net worth to an estimated half a million dollars. I don't know, I want to live somewhere like where it's super cold. What's the coldest spot? Alaska? Australia, so what's the coldest? Before he announced to his fans that he'd be going to college for computer engineering, all before releasing his next mixtape and first studio album. My mind up, man. I'm going to college, man. Fuck it. I'm going to VCU, man. Virginia University, man. <laughs> Lil Bibby was raised by his older sister who taught him how to hustle in Chicago's rough east side. He saw his first dead body when he was only 7 years young and thought he'd never leave the streets. After dropping out of school to deal full time, Bibby quickly realized he needed a way out of Chirac. His rap career would do just that, but it was also going to change his life in some very unexpected ways. What's going on guys, my name is Mike McCredden, documenting the life and career of Lil Bibby prior to fame, here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now, we've covered other Chicago rappers like Montana of 300 and Chief Keef, but you guys have been long requesting G Herbo. So I got good news, after this one, that's what we're going to fill, and it's going to drop tomorrow. In the meantime, let us know who you want us to document next in the comments down below. Ain't enough smoke, ain't enough lean, you ain't did what I did, you ain't seen what I seen. All this stress for a nigga 18. Started from the bottom, now I'm living my dream. Brandon Dickerson was born on July 18, 1994 in Chicago's Ruffy Side. He lived with his mom and she was a drug addict, leaving Brandon to be raised by his older sister Lily. His big sis just so happened to be a gangster and he spent a lot of nights with her on the streets. What's up, it's your boy Lil Baby, and you in Chicago, telling in my old neighborhood, man. 77 and Phillips. Growing up there were no rules and no one to teach young Brandon right from wrong. He saw his first dead body at 7 years old and quickly grew numb to all the death and violence he was exposed to day in day out. When he was 14 his mother was finally able to kick her drug habit and began raising her family. But by then Brandon was already hard into the street life. How'd you do in school? Man, nah, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> no studying wasn't really his thing, but he did find some refuge at the youth center, CYC, Rebecca K. Crown. There he could shoot hoops, and he was so good, well, it allowed him to make the school basketball team. His teammates gave him the nickname Little Bibby after NBA All Star Mike Bibby, and it was at this youth center shooting hoops that he met good pal Lil Herb, or you know him as G Herbo. So as we get the chance, I'm busting Bibby ass. I go Bibby brother right there, put the camera on. Look, that's big bro though. Look, so they don't know I ain't sneak dissing. I go his brother right there, so he go here. Let's go get back to Bibby. He made it to his senior year in high school before deciding school was a waste of time. His education was useless on the streets, so in his senior year, just one credit short of graduating, he dropped out. Bibby was spending every day hustling hard, but as the war in Chirac heated up, he was tired of looking over his shoulder and wanted a way out. Like, this is my favorite block. Somebody starts shooting at you, or the police come, and just run through that, you know what I'm saying? And then my house is right there, so I'll run through that and dip through the back of my house. As dangerous as his hustler lifestyle was, it gave Lil Bibby a lot of perspective and material to draw upon for his lyrics. He began rapping in his free time and soon partnered up with Lil Herb. The two had recorded short raps on their flip phones for years, and slowly the two started to put out tracks. In 2012 and 13, he worked hard on building his foundations as a rapper, changing up his flow multiple times within a song and making sure his rhymes were clear. And again, with that deep voice, I guess he had to put a little extra focus on it. <coughs> My voice just went deep. While many rappers glorified the violence in Chicago, Bibbs just wanted to tell his story and relay what life was really like in the hood. Gave me sick, like baby hop on this remix. That's 500, no free sick, cause I'm hot. And I do the shit for my block. His sound was unique, and people couldn't believe that deep voice was coming out of a teenager. He was putting together his first big state when he began receiving respect from some big names, including ASAP Yams and Kevin Durant. Rockin' purple label, I know you ain't got those on. Get up in the booth and turn eight 
like Gohan. As his debut tape was nearing completion, he met Drake backstage during one of his tours and had some serious pressure placed on his young shoulders. The Almighty Drizzy had offered to co-sign the young artist and said that everyone was expecting big things from his debut. Little Bibby knew how important that was and went back to the studio to record a few more hits, including Whole Crew and Water. Gotta keep my head above water. I've been going hard, gotta go a little harder. I've been thinking smart, gotta think a little smarter. Inspired by a song title of his fellow Chi Town idol, Kanye West, Bibby named his mixtape Free Crack, and the title worked because the fans, they came running. Look out, crack! Here I come! Was that clip inappropriate for me to use? I don't think Dave Chappelle would appreciate it. Released in 2013, the album was quickly noticed for Bibby's mature sound and intelligent wordplay. Vibe magazine featured the then 19 year old rapper praising his debut and tapping him as one of the rising stars of 2014. Shit, man. A lot of people don't. I don't none of my homies don't go to school. Mm -hmm. But what's wrong? But why? I, I, I hear you saying it, and I. But what, what's wrong with school? Afterwards, he did extensive press tours to promote his mixtape, including an interview with Sway on his serious show, Sway in the Morning. On it, they encouraged Bibby to value his education, and co-host Heather B promised to throw him a graduation party if he went back and finished high school. Little Bibby tweeted out that he got his GED. He finished high school, and wow. he got it. Bibby agreed not only did he finish with straight A's, but is currently deciding which college he wants to get his doctorate at. Yeah, paving new paths. As a result, we promised him a party, and I was like, nah, I ain't gonna have to spend no money, but damn it. <laughs> as for the rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is before their fence. My name is Michael McCredden, and as promised, G Herbo is on its way. Now, you guys can hit a little bell on your cell phone so it'll notify you every time I upload a video. And that way you won't miss G Herbo or whatever else I have for you coming in the future. We've done tons of bios on this channel, including rappers, actors, YouTubers, singers, models, porn stars, basically anyone who's famous. So be sure to uh, browse around, hit subscribe, find that bell, and I'll see you guys in another video. Huh!